So good afternoon to all of you. Uh, Dr. Venkatraman, Director of IGCAR, GSO, and the CMD Bhavani, Dr. Vidya, Dr. Meenakshi, Dr. Saroja, and I'm remembering when I see in Shivaraman and Anand Shivan about the cricket, which we used to play with tennis ball, the, the graduating trainees and newly joined uh, trainees and uh, colleagues from IGCAR, uh, where I spent most of my life. When Dr. Venkatraman called me and we had a con telephonic conversation whether inviting me to be the chief guest of this uh, graduation function, I just had doubts whether this is where I started whether I should be the chief guest. In fact, uh, he persuaded me to say that it's appropriate that I should be here. I was just wondering, how do I connect my coming back to IG car? The two thoughts came to my mind. One is that you plant a sapling, nurture it to grow, and then move out, and then pursue something else. And then you come back, if you get an opportunity to come back and see, how the plant is nurtured, and how is it grown. It's an opportunity to come back. So I said, it's an opportunity to come back. That's what I, th in fact, Professor Venkatraman also echoed this. I think you should come back and see how is it. So I could see there's an opportunity for me to come back and see how the nurturing is happening and continuing or not. The other thought came to me is that, you know, you have uh, in the Indian tradition system, when you have a daughter in the house, you get her married, and she will go somewhere and have her life. It's always important to see, go and see how she's doing uh, in, in, the, in the house where she has gone. So when you go and visit her after a break, and you will be tense, but you also like to see how she's doing it. So coming back to IGCAR, especially to training school, the graduation function, is an opportunity for me to go look back and see how my children are doing. That's, that's the reason why I, I agreed to come here. And it's very nice of Dr. Venkat Raman to invite me and also Dr. Saroja. In fact, Dr. Saroja also played an important role along with us in interacting with the trainees. Normally, when I come to give a, uh, uh, an occasion like this, I don't really formally prepare what I should talk. And I get a mood uh, the situation and then talk about it. Well, it's very appropriate to recall great mentor uh, Dr. Venkatraman did it about Dr. Baldev Raj. And uh, we call certain people visionaries because they think beyond the current reality and create situations to achieve that. I think he did it, he did that. There was times when we were struggling to get people, one, two people used to join every year. And it used to be a big struggle to have human resources at the, at the center. The fact that we could start the training school not only met the requirements of this center, but I think you could see the, the data that has been provided. All our trainees are there in all the centers of atomic energy. That's the way that one thought by Dr. Valdeviraj made that big difference in the human resources. The other thing is about the Humi Bhavan Institute activities. I'm sure the research scholars have really augmented another set of human resources for pursuing research. I think these are the two great things which Dr. Baldev uh, did to this center. And I'm very fortunate that uh, I had a, an opportunity to implement certain of his ideas. So by paying my tribute to him and recalling uh, uh, the, the great things which he has done and the way he motivates, the way he encourages, and I was just thinking about how relevant we are today. Those of you who are following the news would see the Ukraine-Russia war has really threatened how important it is to be energy independent. Every country should be energy independent. However rich you are, however you are there, you have to be energy independent. So energy security is a very important component for every country. So in that context, Department of Atomic Energy plays a very significant role in ensuring energy security to this country. While we talk about renewables or while we talk about alternate sources of energies, we are far, far away from meeting the requirements of base load. The BP uh, protection says even by 2050, at least 40% of the energy will come from coal. That means the CO2 is going to pollute the atmosphere. Climate change is there. Climate change doesn't mean that unseasonal rains. 
it is the global temperatures are increasing, global sea levels are increasing, and how much ever you talk about the alternate source of energies, they're far away because the storage is an issue. So we are now looking at nuclear as a source of energy. You can see UAE floating on oil has a reactor. The Americans who stopped nuclear reactors have stopped, uh, started licensing new reactors. UK is thinking of new reactors. The Germans who said we don't want nuclear have started telling that no, 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 we will keep them again and we will continue with that. It's all renaissance of nuclear because this is the answer for us if you don't want coal as a source of energy. In that context, atomic energy plays an important role. And not only in India, but the whole world, if you just go uranium resources and use only once, they are not sufficient resources out there. Especially in India, we have very less of uranium. You have to go through the, the fast reactor cycle in order to utilize effectively the thorium. So IGCAR plays a very important role in this mission of ensuring energy security to this country. And all of you who are graduated and coming and joining in different organizations has an important role to play. And fast reactors will be the answer when you want to, to effectively utilize the uranium resources, not only in India, elsewhere also. So you have an important role to play in that way of energy security. Well, somebody said, uh, now we move to say life. I was just expecting uh, the, the feedback from the students to say the fun part of it, which they had. I think they're too serious probably, and they're talking about education, new courses, and other things. What type of fun which you had during your training school is what I think we should have also. I was expecting to share, but then looks like there's a serious patch, which I think we have, it will be there, but it's good to be serious also. So when you graduate, now the question is, it is going to be a very tough competition to get selected. I'm sure that how tough it has been there. The BRC training school interviews are very, very ruthless people. They don't allow you to go out of the room till you say you don't know. I don't know. The first time you say don't know, they will not leave you. They'll give you more suggestions. <laughs> that is to make you more fool, actually. The more suggestions they give you, that means more marks you're losing. You'll not realize that part of it will be there. So that's a tough competition. Two 2.5 lakh people apply. 250 people get selected, and you're one of them. Must be very proud. Your parents must be very proud. Then somebody said, here you come, exams, more study, more subject, what is left? This is all tough life. It will be there. Yes, it is tough. The diamond, like, you know, diamond has to go through the tough, uh, tough journey. Now that is done. Now the placements are over. I'm sure that placements are also a lot of concern. People would tell on the day one, you should study well, get better rank, so they'll get a better placement. I'm sure that that's what your peers would have told. And you will start studying seriously for first one month, and after that you'll forget about it. Till one month before the, the training school uh, selection, when the placement comes, you'll start worrying, oh, I should have done this, I should have done that. Now that is all done, now you are placed. My advice or my suggestion to you is that do not bother where you are placed. It really doesn't matter. If I go back and look back and analyze my batchmates where they were there, whether the toppers did well or the people who have been placed in what they wanted, they did well, you can debate about it. And hence, don't worry about it. Now the journey is going to start. Forget about what has happened in the past. Today you are placed in a place. And then the journey starts now. So what you should do now after joining? I'm sure some of you, many of your engineers here you are, you'll be told in one year you should do your MTech and you should publish one paper. This is what should be your focus in the first one year. I would say, if you want to be successful in your life, somebody said one of your batchmates will become chairman at Tommy Energy Commission. Yes, it should be. And some, there were a lot of smiles were there when somebody said, that means there's a doubt is there. Doubt should not be there. I recall telling the same thing on the first batch. Some months back, one of the first batch trainee called me and told, Sir, I have become a section head, and she was very proud. But I'm more happy that she, she felt appropriate to call me and tell that she's achieved that position. That means you are in that path. So what I would say is that once you go and join, after the celebration, coming out of this exam, all those training problems are done, you go and join your, your lab, lab, division, whatever you call it. The first thing to be done is do what has been given to you. 
however small that is there, don't worry about it. Do the job given to you efficiently with all your heart in doing it well. So this is the first mantra, you should do it. You may compare with others and say you're doing research, he's publishing papers, going somewhere. Don't worry about all those things. You are assigned a job and you should do that job well. And that's why you are trained for. Put your best efforts. If it's a simple job, do it easily, right? So why should you worry about if the job is not very complex? But then while doing it, you should also pay attention to what more you should learn to excel in the job which you have been assigned to. Let us say you're running a steam generator in an FBTR. It looks simple, but I think there's a lot of challenges which are there. Look at how to run it, how it is run elsewhere, what more you should learn. So that is the next step you should do it, so that you start learning about what are the possible things are there. And see how can you contribute to the, well, the progress of the division or the department which you're doing, even if it is outside the, the domain of your work. Today, the department spends a lot of its efforts in doing public awareness because connecting to public is important. If you're good at that, do that part of it. Or locate or identify things which you can contribute or learn about it. And one thing very good about training school is that your batch number. Even if you have not met your batchmate for the last 25 years, the day you meet and say you are the batchmate, suddenly the friendship comes and you can get job done just because you see your batchmate. So don't forget these links. In fact, I would suggest to you that once in a month or once in a few weeks meet, maybe for short term, learn from each other what other person is doing. I'm sure that if it's mechanical engineering, what chemistry is being done, also not, not unimportant. Please do that part of it. So you allocate your time of 100% into about 60% of the time to do what you have to do in your, in your assigned job. Another 20% is to learn new skills, what can emerge in, in times, and about 10% of time to contribute to the service of the organization, and other 10% for personal growth and satisfaction. This is the most challenging thing, because what satisfies you today need not be satisfying you after five years. Tell me at my age, I will tell you what I was thinking at your age important is not at all important at this age and you would be at my age sometime. So I guess, so what you need to do is that 10% of your time, spend time to enrich yourself or identify that which will give you happiness and that, please pursue that part of it. People think spirituality is for old people. I would say spirituality is needed more for young people because you have a life to travel and you have to enrich yourself, so please, and try to, to identify those strength areas, and hence I'm sure that you would be successful. Several times it happens that all of us will be working in the same organization, doing almost same things, but some people progress faster than us, and we don't know why. I'll tell you the reason is he has done something which you are not done, not because of any other reasons. It's not because he knows somebody or she knows somebody. So this is what I would say. You need to have a calibration among your, for yourself every month and see, these are my goals. Am I traveling in that direction or not? Only thinking about I want to achieve a goal. Nothing will happen just by thought process. We have to put efforts. Well, this is what I think we have to do. I'm sure that the, when you are successful, it gives a lot of happiness to you. In fact, I keep telling to people when I talk to young people, when Sachin Tendulkar scolded out 100th century, he looked at the top. I am sure that the whole country was gaga about it. I'm sure there's such in, like, like Virat Kohli, six, two sixes in the recent match, also gaga in the world. But I think for me, while we are all happy about it, he would be the most happiest person for what he has done. So do something for yourself which gives you happiness. I think this is something which I wanted to, to tell you, a goal to say, don't think the training is done and nothing more to study. I think lifelong study has to be done and I'm sure that you would contribute towards uh, to betterment of yourself. And I'm sure a lot of faculty members, it's very rarely you can see so many faculty members coming towards and then helping the students. Don't leave them after the training is over. Meet them, ask them some doubts, questions. If They will be very happy. There will not be any person, if you ask some doubt, they will say, I don't have time. You will rarely find such people in atomic energy. Well, my colleagues are here, and I've gone through the life of journey, and I divide the life journey into four phases. 
The first phase is childhood. You know, you're born, your parents will take care, and then you go to the school. I call it as a phase two, where in the phase two, your school, the college, you want to study well, and you want to get a better job. Now that is the phase three. Now you're entering the phase three part of it. In the phase three, you want to do well in your job, achieve promotions, whatever you think about, and then reach a level. And there'll be phase four. People like me who are there in phase four, that is where is the time to give back to the society and give back wherever it is needed. And, and that is, but then you can give back only when you can do well in these three phases of your life. I'm sure that you, please remember my words, and when you come to my age, you'll remember why, what I said, why is it important to enjoy current life, but prepare for the future and enjoy your life, bring success to yourself. I'm sure there are parents who are here, parents may be virtually available, uh, present, they'll be the happy people to see you progress. But your progress is most important for you. And discerning what is the progress is the most important thing. Well, I think I can, I don't want to, an occasion where you want to celebrate the, the joy of being successful, why is he giving philosophy, don't think about it. I think to continue to be successful, this is what is, is important. Well, uh, the tree has grown. I could see this, uh, there are some new branches have come. Uh, one of the good part of BRC Training School is they're very, uh, right from the days it's beginning, we always been thought about introducing new disciplines to meet the requirements. And I could see that, you know, after I left, at least two more branches have come. I am sure that this is a, an important part of it. I think I could see that everybody thanked Training School. There are faculty, there are leaderships, all these people are contributing, but there are many others who are contributing to your success. I'm sure this Ram Setu, you heard about it when Rama was doing it, the squirrel was, was did it like that. There are several non-faculty uh, members. I'm sure my colleagues who are sitting here, I used to call them as young girl teams, and there are many people who are contributing towards the success of the training school program, and we should remember them and acknowledge them and for their role, because for them, it, it is to contribute to you. For you, it's your life of progressing, it will be there. So I think it's a, it's a very joyous occasion, but at the same time when you're entering into your career, it's a very important responsibility so that you continue to do well. Uh, since you're already on the top, you have to continue to perform well so that you would get satisfaction of achieving success or achieving what you think is success. In fact, I would quote one and stop my my talk by so somebody said, asked me, how do you know whether you're being successful or not? Is it by comparing with somebody? Obviously not. So you have to have one calibration in your life, whether given a situation, given an opportunity, whether you're putting best of your effort. As long as you're sure that you're satisfied that you have given your best, and whatever destination you've reached, is the best for you. And that is where I think that calibration, we should keep doing it. But then if you're guilty of not giving the best, that's where I think you need to correct yourself and move forward. Put all the success of coming up to the stage behind, take it as a base, and then achieve progress and be successful in life. I'm sure one of you will become director of, of this center. I, if, if I'm alive, invite me on that day. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>